as railwaymen of 1838, Driver Shaw and Farman Evans were to take the Lion, 123 years old, on the three-mile run from Rugby to Dunchurch. The Lion had been brought from her den, the Crewe Railway Museum, where she's been kept since 1928. After such a long rest, she seems pretty eager to be on the move again. Her appetite was as keen as ever. But even with a lion, sooner or later, enough is enough. This was not her only outing, though. She's appeared in several films, the most famous being the Tipfield Thunderbolt. But nevertheless, she's made the most of this chance to roar again. Isn't she a beauty? So we're going to start and have a look at making this uh, rocket. When you look at the actual uh, photographs of the full-size engine, this rocket is actually quite different. It extends way back almost to the horn plate and this uh, hanger, spring hanger, actually goes through this bracket and also it looks like this bracket is keyed to the frame so once again I'm going to uh, simulate the full size engine this is the horn plate on the frame So to key this bracket into the frame I'll move a slot just behind uh, this hole for the hanger. I'll make it, uh, I think I'll probably make it 2mm wide or maybe 2.5. See what it looks like once we get it on the machine. So I've got a bit of bar here. This is actually uh, an off cut from making this frame. This is what's left of this particular frame. So I can get two of these brackets out of here. So the first job is to cut this on the bandsaw. I think probably the um, the bracket on, on the original engine is actually um, a U shape rather than a, a right angle shape. So that's what I'm going to do uh, in this particular case. Tighten that down. Okay, so we need to um, machine the step. So I'll leave this to about 2.5 millimeters. Um, and then trim the end off the length to get a key two millimeters wide. Okay, we're ready to slot them. Just make sure the vase is clean. So put them in that way around.
Okay, the next one done. So all I've done here is mark three centre hole positions and I'll finish this off in a drilling machine and what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this to the frame with some 8 ba screws just going to machine a slot for this to key into so I've just eyeballed the cutter close to the hole maybe about a half a millimetre off this is the hole for the uh, spring hanger so we're going to touch on and take two cuts to get 1.5 millimeter deep. So let's go. Okay, so I've used a 2.5 wide millimetre cutter, so this should just slot straight in with a bit of luck. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a lovely fit. Spot on. That being 8B here, unfortunately out of camera shot. Trimming for length, using the frame as a reference. So as soon as the milling cutter touches the frame, that's the final length. Time to machine the tape around this uh, brace or bracket, something like that. But we need a radius at this end, so I'm going to use a 10 millimeter end mill. So I've got a 5 millimeter radius gauge, so I'll just sort of estimate what I think looks about right. Put a radius on. I think that might be a bit deep actually, a bit shallower. Something like that. So I've got it on a uh, one, two, three block which I can hold in the vise clamp down so I'll need to line this uh, line up with the axis of the mill. I've got a loose piece on here so that once I've got this one set up I can put up against there, tighten it down and then when the next one comes in I can get it at the same angle. So let's uh, crack on and go to the mill. So I've got it mounted on the vise and I'm just going to use a pin on a piece of plaster scene attached to the cutter there and I'll just transverse that along and uh, adjust its position. Okay. So 
So I want to tap that way. Okay, should be good enough. for watching. See you next time.